So maybe I switch the talks uh, uh, and I start with the one which was planned for tomorrow because okay. this talk really relates uh, sure. perfect to, to uh, uh, the topic uh, Wolfgang just addressed and I tell you something about the German mouse clinic and tomorrow we can have a okay. bit more about the tools and, and so on. So uh, as we just talked in the discussion about this, this is about the situation 15 years ago one PhD student takes about three or five years to generate a mouse mutant and then there are just a few months left for the phenotypic analysis of the mouse and uh, so this poor student just went to, to the pet clinic uh, to find out what is the phenotype of, of his mouse mutant and unfortunately this uh, person didn't find any phenotype. So this is exactly the, the problem, so nowadays as we heard, there are many more um, possibilities to generate mouse mutant lines, but still the bottleneck is the phenotypic characterization of these mutant lines. And that's where you can jump in with the German mouse clinic, because it's our duty to phenotypically characterize mutants, mouse mutants. So please don't go to the pet clinic, but maybe go to the German mouse clinic. And uh, so that's exactly what we do. We do a systematic phenotype analysis of mice. So this is really a unique con uh, concept uh, worldwide because uh, so we are really open access. We have the logistics that you can send your mice to our facility and uh, that we can di directly phenotype the mice. So regarding the story to interrupt, sure. because I think it's important, what about the two things? One is the genetic background of the animal that you have to receive, and it could be okay. And second, I suppose that you have to redirect the animal just to enter the clinic, or it could be from any animal cause with the different type of infections coming around. So uh, th that's exactly uh, the topic which is unique, that we need a health certificate of your mice. Our veterinarians will check the health certificate and if our veterinarians say it's okay to import your mice in our facility, you can directly import your mice into the facility and start direct phenotyping of the mice. So this really, I don't know any other mouse clinic in the world that offers this kind of, uh, I don't want to say service, this kind of collaboration. Yeah. And uh, for this uh, genetic background, so um, in the case of a bilateral collaboration of two institutes, or an institute and the German Mouse Clinic. Um, the, the, if we have uh, a uh, heterozygous heterozygous mating and to get the uh, litter mate controls right. as controls, then we are fine because okay. the controls are the same genetic background as the mutants okay. that uh, will be analyzed. <coughs> what is also quite unique is that we have experts from different fields of research working together in the same facility, really working together in, under one roof. And uh, so these experts are able to do really a scientific interpretation of the results. We are able to do um, genotype environment interaction analysis. Um, we can also uh, use our phenotyping pipeline for the analysis of uh, drugs and compounds. Um, then you already heard a bit about uh, InfraFrontier. Uh, which coordinate, coordinates the phenotyping activities of mouse clinics uh, within Europe. The German mouse clinic is part of the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium. You also heard about this already, but maybe I spent a few words more about the phenotyping uh, uh, part of this uh, consortium. We are doing some aging re research as part of our contribution to this uh, International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium. And we also uh, develop new mouse phenotyping technologies. So that's a view on the German mouse clinic, which also tells you uh, why we are called mouse clinic. Because uh, we are organized quite similar to a human clinic. So this means we have uh, neurology, clinical chemistry, bone and cartilage, uh, metabolism, um, lung function, pathology, here, ah, that's perfect. Point, uh. Great, thank you. So lung function, 
um, pathology, eye analysis, nociception, molecular phenotyping, allergy, immunology, behavior. So similar to a human uh, clinic, and that's also in a human situation, the patient has to be checked very fast and to find out what is the problem with the patient. In our case with the mice, we spend about one week for every of these modules uh, to, uh, to do the phenotyping in the mice. And here you can also see from the different logos of the different modules that we are collaborating with, for example, the uh, Mu University of Munich, where we have an expert partner who is a neurologist in the hospital in Munich and who has access to patients and who gives us the, uh, the expertise in how we do phenotyping in neurology. The same is for clinical chemistry or for uh, metabolism or co for cardiology <coughs> or immunology and so on, where we have experts from different areas with, with patients giving input into the mouse phenotyping. And how does the uh, phenot ah, and this is how our facility is, uh, is organized. This is also quite interesting because the facility is a combination of laboratory, the blue one area, and the mouse facility, the yellow facility. So this means the phenotyping is di directly done within the mouse facility. And how does the phenotyping look, uh, work? So the mice really go in a weekly interval from one uh, module to the next one, which is also shown right here in our uh, pipeline. This is the age of the, the mice. Um, starting with uh, six weeks, the mice are sent over to our facility. Then they have two weeks uh, for adaptation. And if I say mice or, uh, or mouse line, this means 15 male mutants, 15 female mutants, 15 male controls and 15 female controls as a cohort. The youngest and the oldest should not be uh, more than seven days apart. And this cohort will be shipped, has two, two weeks for adaptation, and then goes in a weekly interval from the different areas with different tests uh, through the phenotyping and adds up in the week 16 in pathology and the uh, organ taking for expression profiling. Sorry. So sure. Are you carrying out all these analyses throughout the different weeks uh, as they catch well, right? Yes. Okay. So this means, for example, in, sc in screen, screen week number eight, we do the open field test. In week number nine, we do the uh, modified Sherpa and grip strength analysis, and later on also the anatomical observation, and so on. So Are you following some guidelines or something else uh, for saying, okay, I'm doing the neurological, uh, for example, uh, test during the night weeks, uh, and all the others, for example, immunology during the Week, uh, or you have, for your experience, uh, seeing these tests in different weeks? Uh. Yes, so um, we the, the German mouse clinic exists since uh, 2001, and so this means we have quite some ex collected some experience how to organize this kind of phenotyping pipeline, and we um, improved it uh, since, since, uh, since then, also in collaboration with other mouse clinics, we exchanged our experiences and find out, for example, we do all behavior-related tests at the beginning of the pipeline because we want to have the mice quite naive. They shouldn't have been touched too often by, by humans, and this means these tests are in the beginning. Um, all tests which uh, interfere, for example, because we have to put some narcosis on the mice, they are put to the end of the pipeline, and also, for example, um, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to do the bone analysis in very young animals because they are still uh, uh, growing, so we put them uh, to the end of the pipeline. And having all these different uh, pieces in mind, uh, you, uh, the, the phenotyping more or less assembles from, uh, from self. And maybe if you are not so familiar with mouse phenotyping, I'm not sure, I'll show you a few examples how these tests look like. So for example, this is the rotor rod test. It is quite simple. It's this rod, and this rod accelerates, and the mice try to keep on the rod as long as possible. And if they fall down, you can see here the green light, so this means 
Um, now we have taken the time how long the mouse is able to keep on the rock. And the mice have three uh, tries to, to, stay, uh, to do the test, and we take the mean, uh, mean value of the three trials. And normally, from trial to trial to trial, the mice improve how long they can stay on the, on the rock. Do, do, do you have also a learning session before the trial? No. So the first no. trial is really the first time they, 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 uh, they touch the instrument. If you do, would do it uh, maybe 10 times, the mice will learn that nothing happens uh, right there, and they would, would not uh, try, uh, try harder in, anymore. But three times, it's perfect for them. <laughs> Another kind of test is di directly derived from human diagnostics. So this is the, the laser interference biometry, where you can see, um, uh, can test the size of the, the eye. For example, you can find out whether there are some glaucoma mice around. And uh, so the, the instrument is directly derived from human diagnostics. So normally the human puts, uh, looks like here in the, the instrument, and then you uh, measure the size of the eye, but in this case there's a small podest, and the mouse looks into the machine. In most cases they are anesthetized because they would move too much, and then you can directly also get the size of the eye from, from these animals. In some cases, you are not able to use the way how human diagnose a, a disease, like for example for the, just the ability to see, and in this case, you have to play some tricks. In this, uh, for example, uh, we have the so-called virtual drum, which is this apparatus right here. It's just four computer screens put together. And inside this computer screen, you see this small podest where the mouse is put. This is just to, keep the, to locate the mouse in the center of this uh, equipment. And normally, the mouse doesn't jump off of this uh, podest. And right here on the walls, you can see a black and white pattern. And now this black and white pattern starts, as you can see from the mouse, to move in this direction. And the mouse just looks on the, the pattern and moves along uh, the same way, if the mouse is able to see. We several times change the direction. And every, so every time the mouse moves with the, with the pattern, it gets a score. And every time it gets a score, this pattern is getting narrower. And this is done as long as uh, the mouse gets scores. And this means you even can quantify the ability to see of the mouse. Then I think I have a small video which summarizes some more tests. I hope it works. Oh, yeah. This is an open field test. The mouse is in a 50 times 50 centimeters area uh, and is just allowed to explore. Maybe make a oh, small stop. Okay. Does it work anymore? Okay. Uh, I can't stop, sorry. <laughs> Just have to continue with the <laughs> with the movie. Okay, so we have seen the open field, 50 times 50 centimeters <coughs> area where the mouse is able to explore. Another test is the, the modified hole board, where there is a bigger area to explore and where there are more uh, possibilities to analyze. For example, a known and unknown uh, object. This the grip strength, the rotor rod we have seen already. Grip strength was used uh, for the muscle force of the animals. Gate analysis, where the mouse is on, on a, um, uh, um, walks right here and we, we video the mouse. This is the ECG analysis. And you can see right here, this is the test mouse. These are two familiar mice just to calm down the animal. This is the analysis of the echocardiography. You can see right here uh, the echo. And uh, on the background, you can see what is measured from the mouse. And this is a test where uh, you need about uh, six months to, to get trained. Um, this is a magnetic resonance tomography, body surface uh, um, temperature analysis for the mice. Or 
clinical chemistry where we do analysis of blood samples with an uh, automatic analyzer and this is a robotics which distributes all the blood samples to, to the different uh, screens. And uh, so one example um, where we have applied these uh, phenotyping technologies where the mice went through our phenotyping pipeline and uh, we have analyzed FTSJ uh, mice, uh, which is uh, the gene is, uh, um, is a gene for intellectual uh, disability in humans and the mice were phenotyped in our phenotyping pipeline and uh, for sure we also found uh, phenotypes for intellectual disabilities uh, for example in the um, IntelliCage and in the Wildmaze test these mice uh, were, uh, were not as good at, as the controls in the tests but for, uh, we found additional uh, phenotypes in these mice for example right here this is the hot plate test and you can see that the mice didn't feel the, the thermal um, pain from, uh, from the hot pl uh, plate as the controls so this is female controls female mutants, uh, male controls, male mutants, and you can see already in the first and in the second reaction, uh, the mice reacted uh, much slower than the mutants, uh, than the controls, and uh, we could give back this information to our collaboration partner, who has contact again to families of um, human FTSJ um, patients, and they again checked the phenotypes we found in addition to what was known from the humans, from the mice in the humans again, and they found, okay, in some pheno, uh, families of this uh, mutation, they found also the same um, changes in the, in the patients, which they did not expect just from the patients, but now the mouse helped us to find uh, additional changes in, in the humans. And this might have possibilities for better diagnosis, maybe also for, for better therapy of, of these uh, patients. Another example is uh, the restless legs uh, syndrome, um, where um, our colleagues from, from the Helmholtz Center work on this, and uh, they found out from Chiva studies that mice, wise, mice 1 uh, would be a candidate gene for um, restless legs syndrome, and uh, so they produced the mouse and we did the phenotyping of these mice and we found out that from the knockout, the, the homozygous uh, knockout, they are lethal, but so we analyzed the heterozygous uh, mutants and we found out, okay, so these mice, as expected, or we had a look what might correspond from our phenotyping to the restless leg syndrome in the mice and uh, we found that the activity in these animals uh, was higher, for example, in the um, open field test, they were the uh, total distance was increased, also the average uh, speed was increased, but we also found additional phenotypes um, which were not related to the restless leg syndrome. And so we went back and said, okay, there, there is a first relation from mice one with restless leg syndrome, at least in the knockout, heterozygous knockout mice, but for sure in humans, this is a, uh, there are point mutations uh, responsible for, for the restless legs. And so they created a human version or humanized version of the mouse. And now these animals are analyzed in much more detail for these phenotypes. And uh, that's why we need a more sophisticated screening pipeline. This means we don't go for the complete checkup from top to, to the ground of the animals, but we have phenotyping pipelines where we, for, for example, can focus on anxiety, depression and schizophrenia with very um, specialized tests. Or another pipeline is for learning and memory. Another pi pipeline is for motor motoric abilities or for sensory uh, abilities. Uh, uh, how do you decide the pipeline is based you, you do a kind of first uh, pilot so, analysis yeah. and then you go for one or the other? Yeah. So if there is nothing known about the mutant yeah. line, we go for the primary screening pipeline where we really check all the parameters. 
if the mouse is already characterized in quite detail, or if we have already a hypothesis. So these tests are hypothesis-driven pipelines okay. where we want to follow up a special hypothesis. Then we go to a pipeline which uh, corresponds to the hypothesis we want to analyze. Another pipelines are, for example, for kidney function, glucose metabolism, energy metabolism, or um, for non-invasive imaging technologies. Like, for example, we have micro CT and MRI. This is one. Uh, this, is, this is an in vivo micro uh, CT scanner. This is an in vitro uh, micro CT scanner. And uh, for example, this is a knee joint of a mouse uh, analyzed with a micro CT. Uh, these are some examples for skull abnormalities. Or even the um, middle and inner ear phenotyping of the mice can be done with micro CT. Or in this case, this is a um, newborn uh, lung. Uh, newborn mouse lung. This is an example of uh, MRT technology. For example, you can see here the peristaltic uh, movements um, of the digestive tract. Or some uh, high fat uh, liver um, after uh, 12 weeks of high fat diet. We even can use it for um, spectroscopy, uh, for example, for, from this high-fat uh, uh, diet uh, mice in the liver. There are additional um, pipelines for immunity, allergy, lung function, or also where we have uh, progressive phenotypes, where we do phenotyping at uh, different ages of the animals to find out how the phenotype uh, develops during the age of the animals. So, if you're interested in the results, we have already uh, analyzed hundreds of mutant lines, and uh, so you can go to our web page uh, to uh, mouseclinic.de. If you go to results and phenom uh, map and results, then you get an overview about all the mutant lines we have already analyzed. And you can see right here the different areas of research and uh, a list of uh, mutant lines. If you want to uh, find your uh, favorite mutant, you just type in right there the gene name or the mutant uh, name. And then you can uh, get an in uh, information about red means uh, there was an interesting phenotype. Um, yellow means a borderline phenotype. Blue means no phenotype. If you go with, via mouse over, you get an, uh, a text with a summary of the phenotype. And if you click on the graph, you even get a display of the different graphs of the phenotyping data. In some cases, we even, uh, you even can download a complete report, which is uh, organized by our MouseDB um, software tool. And uh, I will talk about this in detail tomorrow. So I jump over to uh, the topic Infra Frontier. You just heard about this, but I might uh, keep uh, spend a few more words about this. So we are not the only mouse clinic in the world. Uh, even on the European level, there are several mouse clinics, for example, in Strasbourg, in Havel, in, at the Sanger Center, also in, in Rome, uh, there is um, a mouse clinic starting. And um, not so- yet, Not yet working. Not yet working, but I hope they will join join me <laughs> quite soon. <laughs> yeah, so we expect to, to start working this spring. Yeah, great. So hopefully as soon as possible. And so the Infra Frontier Consortium, they organize the collaboration on the European level of all these mouse works. On the one hand side, on the phenotype. Uh, on the mouse phenotyping area. So this means if somebody needs to have a mouse phenotyped, then they, um, you can, can address them and they can tell you which mouse clinic is best suited for, for your scientific question. In case you want to submit a ready to phenotype uh, 
cohort, then maybe the German mouse clinic might be the best option. Mm -hmm. If you even don't have the muted line right there, but you need to have them established, then maybe the Strasbourg people might better suit it and they can help you to find out which one, who to address for your scientific question. And uh, you heard also that uh, they are doing, they are uh, coordinating the archiving and distribution also via the EMMA, the European Mouse Mutant Archive. So this means whenever you have analyzed your mouse and you don't have space anymore to keep them on the shelf, you can send the mice to EMMA and then they will archive them either via embryos or, or via sperm. And they will also offer them to the scientific community, if you agree, uh, that somebody else who is working on this scientific question can get this mouse and continue working without rederiving re uh, the complete knockout from, from uh, scratch, but directly start with this mutant line. There are also uh, additional uh, um, services like model development or axenic services. For sure, they um, offer training and, and consulting, and there are also some NKA uh, cancer models. So who, who is part of, uh, of InfraFrontier? Uh, it's 14 European countries, EMBL and Canada also, and the mouse clinics in Europe, the European Mouse Mutant Archive, bioinformatics and all is coordinated by InfraFrontier GmbH, which is located in Munich. As I said, the German mouse clinic is not the only uh, mouse clinic in the world, but we were in 2001 the first one to, uh, to start this idea. But um, very soon other European uh, partners jumped in, so the Institut, Institut Clinique Souris in uh, Strasbourg, the MRC in Harvard and the Sanger Center also developed uh, mouse clinics. And so we decided, okay, we don't compete, we collaborate with each other. And as a first step, we um, compared our protocols and uh, generated a so-called portfolio of mouse phenotyping, so the, the gold standard of mouse phenotyping uh, technologies uh, um, in this consortium. And as this portfolio was there, we decided, okay, let's start in the international level a European mouse clinic and phenotype 500 mutant lines together in a project, put the data on a public server so everybody has access, and put the mice into the, EU, into the EMMA so that everybody also can access the mice. And this really worked well. It even worked perfectly. So this is the, the final publication. Uh, just one example where we found additional uh, genes which are associated with bone metabolism and um, so this was the idea okay if we are able to do mouse phen phenotyping on the international level and this works perfect the idea or the dream would be to have a mutant a knockout from each gene each mouse gene which corresponds also to each human gene more or less and have them phenotyped put everything in an uh, uh, on a public server that everybody has access to it. This was, was the dream, and this was the starting of the IMPC, the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium. You also already heard about this. And so this means there are now new partners <coughs> because just four mouse clinics in Europe are not able to do this uh, major project. So many more mouse clinics started in. For example, there's another one now in Prague, uh, in, in Europe. And there are many mouse clinics in, in, uh, in North America, but also some mouse clinics in Asia, and even one um, partner in Australia. And now the idea is to really have in uh, five years, to have in total 20,000 mutants established in phenotype. In the first phase, 5,000. In the second fa uh, phase, uh, even more uh, mouse lines phenotyped. And the data is freely available and the mice are also free, freely available to everybody. Now we are in phase two, and uh, we are close to 8,000 mutant lines that are phenotyped and available on the server. You have, um, and uh, uh, yeah, 
So this is the phenotyping pipeline, which is quite similar to the one I showed you for the German mouse clinic. It's just a different display of the, of the uh, pipeline, but so most of the tests are quite similar. What is in, done in addition is that there is some embryo phenotyping uh, of the mice and also fertility and uh, viability analysis of the mice. And uh, all the data then can be seen on this web page. You just type in your mutant line, uh, your favorite mutant line, and you get information about the phenotype data, the avail availability, you can order the mouse, and so on. And so the good thing is that having now phenotyped 8,000 mutant lines, we are able to do a meta-analysis of all the data. So this means at the moment we are working hard on publishing meta-analysis on the, the data from the different phenotyping aspects. For example, there was a first publication about the, the developmental phenotypes we found in the, in the IMPC consortium. Another one was uh, done for uh, uh, the first 3,000 uh, um, uh, disease models in the, in the consortium. Then we had um, uh, information about the sexual dimorphism, having a look on the complete pool and doing meta-analysis, or for example about hearing loss phenotypes, um, about um, uh, conservation uh, phenotypes, and also on metabolic phenotypes. And this uh, part of, of the paper was uh, mainly coordinated in, in the German mouse clinic in, in, uh, in the Munich part. And what we did is uh, we selected uh, different parameters um, where we had a look at the male and female data. So, for example, tri triglycerides area under the, the curve uh, from, um, uh, from the glucose tolerance tests, um, uh, body mass, uh, metabolic rate, uh, and so on. And uh, we f uh, categorized the mutant lines which had deviations in, in the phenotype. Then we linked all the, uh, the mutant lines with phenotypes to human diseases. We linked them to uh, metabolic pathways and regulatory networks, and also did the prediction of the gene uh, function via so-called more cassettes. So th this means we compared the more regulatory parts of the genes um, and found out that there are some parts which are uh, common. And as the, the project still continued with phenotyping, we could use this information to predict phenotypes from the new uh, 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 lines that were phenotyped in the meantime. And in, I think, more than 90% where we predicted a phenotype, we also found a phenotype in these lines. So this means, in total, we found new candidate genes uh, for, metaboli for metabolism. We also do some aging research in the German mouse clinic. Um, within the IMPC, we are doing 25 lines in total, uh, where we age them to uh, 70 um, weeks. And, uh, uh, sorry, 70 months. And uh, we... Uh, have also a close collaboration with the DZNE, uh, where we have a, a program with, uh, called Hallmarks of Aging. For example, we also did already a project where we had every other day feeding analyzed in these mice and found out that the um, 33 um, parameters were associated with the aging phen phenotype attenuated by every other phenotype similar, uh, similar outcomes in young and aged animals. Uh, we also had a project where we did analysis of rapamycin and spermidine um, as substrates for, for, for the feeding and uh, aged the animals and found out and analyzed whether this has an, a, um, um, an influence on the aging of the, on a healthy aging of the mice. Uh, another aspect which we do is um, the development of new phenotyping technologies. I selected one um, 
One example, which means the breath counts analysis. You might be familiar, for example, with other uh, applications of breath class, for example, in, uh, um, for, for the police, which use it if you have uh, drunk and too much alcohol, or also these dogs, which find out whether uh, diabetes patients will uh, go under hypoglycosis. And the idea was to also collect breath gas from uh, mice and to analyze this for different components and find out whether uh, this might help for phenotyping of animals. And the first problem was how to collect the breath gas of these animals. And uh, we applied this kind of uh, plastic dose uh, where the mice are in and where we put in some, some air and we suck out some of the air. And um, then this air is finally an, uh, put into an analyzer. And uh, this in Natura, this looks like this. You have uh, the, the cage right here, a lot of cables and a big analyzer system. And uh, finally, we applied this uh, new system uh, on, um, on, on the one hand side of uh, MC4R lock-in mice, which get uh, uh, ob obese, and also uh, to diet-induced obesity uh, black six mice, and we compared the results, and we can uh, found in this study 46 VOX, um, which were uh, found in common in both of these, uh, these groups as indicators for, um, for obesity. If you are running a large-scale project like, like the German Mouse Clinic, it's important to have a quality management implemented. So the German Mouse Clinic is uh, certified according to DIN ISO 9001-2015. Uh, this means we have a quality manager and all our phenotyping procedures are um, written down, are documented, and every step of the procedures is documented um, in a certain way. And finally, I want to say uh, that for, for sure we are doing uh, mouse phenotyping, and mouse phenotyping is experimental work in, uh, in animals, but doing mouse phenotyping and mouse experiments in the way we do in the German mouse clinic, this will also help uh, for the three R, for example, for reduction of, uh, of animals. As we are unique, we are collaboration-based phenotyping. We have um, a high efficiency, and uh, this uh, needs less animals. We are centralized at one facility. Uh, so this means, if in m most cases, if you are interested in data from neurology, in data from bone, data, data from clinical chemistry, you need three collaboration partners, and all of them need a cohort of mice shipped over. In our case, you ship once a cohort of animals and you get all the data analyzed from, uh, from uh, our facility. We have a broad spectrum of parameters which are analyzed and all animals are analyzed from the same cohort. This means you can really compare the bone data and the clinical chemical data and the neurology data. And uh, this helps you to also have a meter vision of, of your, um, uh, your data. In the case of uh, the IMPC, we can use shared control animals, which reduces the amount of animals we need. Um, we and our coll uh, colleagues from the uh, consortia are working on the improvement of statistics uh, to tools and data analysis. We avoid repetition, for example, in the um, IMPC, there is an IMITS database which directly says which consorts or which partner does the analysis of which gene, so there is no doubling of any phenotyping. Uh, we have the EMMA consortium uh, who, um, where you can order the mice without having to start from scratch anymore and the data is freely available. We also work on the refinement um, we have experience, we have standardization and routine. This means our technicians do all our tests, in most cases, once a week. If you want to do a test that you did maybe one year ago, you don't have the routine. You have to think about how was the test, and in most cases, 
the first trial you can discard and you have to repeat it anymore. In, in our case, this is standardized and routine. We just do the analysis and the, uh, the quality behind it. That's also the next issue. We have highest quality standards. We, have, we are ISO certified. There is also a publication that all partners of uh, IMPC are working uh, according to the ARRIVE guidelines. Um, we are networking internationally with uh, InfraFrontier and IMPC and we exchange our know-how, so we are up to date and we are working with the physicians, uh, so there is really a re medical relevance of our uh, data and um, we have the possibility to, uh, from our big data set, there is the possibility to do meta-analysis. That's our uh, outlook. We want to contribute also in the third phase of the IMPC. We want to focus also on uh, rare diseases. For sure, we want to focus more on aging. Complex diseases and epistasis might be another topic. Epigenetics is a um, topic which rises and rises and which will be also addressed by the German Mouse Clinic. And uh, we will enforce our collaboration with the uh, human geneticists and physicists. If you're interested in the German Mouse Clinic, go to our website, mouseclinic.de. Uh, That's also where you can get in contact with us for a collaboration. This is all our consortium, uh, all the members of our screen. I want, just want to pick out two persons. Uh, Valeri gallis is my co colleague, um, um, coordinating the, all our activities. And Martin Rabidiangelis is our director. These are our partners in the IMPC, and this is our team when we are working in the mouse facility. Thanks for your attention.